Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of Talk Nerdy to Me. Hopefully you missed us from last week and just straighten up the cameras here, get Jeffro to sit in the right spot and NPS is looking good. We've got people joining us already, which is absolutely fantastic. So this is a welcome to our Facebook and YouTube viewers. Someone likes us already, there's a thumbs up. We've only been on air for like less than 20 seconds. How good is that? Uh, we've got Carol joining us from Ballarat, who's enjoying a hell of a lot more freedom than we are in Melbourne, sands, masks, and uh, self-isolation. Um, so before we get too excited about all these exciting things, I've got to introduce my lads. So uh, MPS and uh, Jeffro, how are we going tonight? Very good. Yeah, good. Oh, my God. So there you go. All right, so 1956. Go for it, MPS. All yours. All right, 1956, the year that you guys picked last week, so, or the other week, so here we go. Um, the 1956 Winter Olympics opened in Cortina, uh, Dempeza, Italy. Don't ask me about how to speak in another language. Okay, yeah. Winter Olympics, yeah. We're not at the summer ones yet. Um, uh, Elvis Presley enters the US music charts for the first time with Heartbreak Hotel. Norma Jean Mortensen legally changes the name to Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, Marilyn Monroe. Monroe. She had a very big year that year, uh, but that's the only point I'm going to make with that. Um, this was interesting. I didn't realise this. Doris Day records her first famous song, Que Sera Sera, uh, and, and it's from Alfred Hitchcock's The Man Who Knew Too Much. I didn't realise it was in there. So, um, Some interesting, because television was relatively new back in 56, even in the States, um, after having opened in London the previous year, Lawrence Oliver's film Richard III, adapted from Shakespeare's play, had its US premiere in theatres and on the NBC TV <laughs> network on the same day. On the television, it's not shown in prime time, but as an afternoon matinee, and is a slightly cut version. It is one of the first such experiments of the kind, of its kind, and uh, Oliver is later nominated for an Oscar for its performance. Hang so on, the first dude. cut version, yeah. Yeah, and this one I've got to put up. Daniel had his <laughs> 1956. <laughs> uh, very good. And you are right. Thank you, uh, Stephen White, for mentioning about Jaime and the thing coming out of his mouth. I was right all along. So there you go. Okay, MPS, continue. Um, and, and close to our hearts, Tunisia gains independence from France. Videotape is first demonstrated at the 1956 uh it's a convention in Chicago, uh, and it's a demonstration of its first practical and, and commercially success, successful videotape format known as two-inch uh, quadruplex. We've got some big words tonight. Just having fun getting around them. Um, here's an interesting one. Uh, President White D. Eisenhower signs the Federal Act, the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956, uh, creating the interstate highway system in the United States. Um, Lockheed U-2 reconnaissance aircraft makes its first flight over the Soviet Union. Even your freaking uh, airplane. Jesus Christ. I can do car one. Um, in New York's Copacabana nightclub, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis perform their last comedy act together. Hmm. There you go. The hard disk drive was invented by an IBM team led by Reynold B. Johnson. So they'll give you computer stuff as well. September 16, 1956. You should, guys should know that date. I was doing my hair that day, so I don't remember. <laughs> September 16, 1956. Television broadcasting in Australia commences. Oh, golly. Um. The Bell X-2 becomes the first manned aircraft to reach Mark III. The world's first industrial-scale commercial nuclear power plant is opened in Calder Hill in England. Not a place that I thought they'd open the first nuclear power plant. Uh, November 22nd in 1956, the Summer Olympics begin in Melbourne, Australia. Uh... 
at the time, uh, Cecil B. DeMille's epic The Ten Commandments, starring, starring Charlton Heston as Moses, is released in the US and becomes the one of the top ten worldwide list of highest grossing films of all time. Um, MGM is The Wizard of Oz is the first major Hollywood film running for more than 90 minutes to be televised uncut in one evening in the US. So obviously they cut films in, into two by that stage and made you watch it over two nights or whatever the case might have been. And that's pretty much about it in terms of what happened in 1956. Very good. Okay, plane sailing as it is with all your aeroplane stories. Jeffro, what's up, man? Well, it's funny. I just happen to have an aeroplane story. Uh, in uh, <laughs> 1956, the uh, RAF decided to retire the Lancaster bomber. So that was the one that was made popular by the uh, 617 Squadron and uh, was very much tied with the bouncing bomb, if you uh, remember that. Uh, the interesting story I found was that... Uh, uh, Parliament decided to pass the Clean Air Act, and this is in response to the Great Smog of 1952. So it took four years to get their act together and say, hey, we've got too much pollution. So it, um, in 52, there was basically 4,000 people that died pretty much within days and another 8,000 people within um, uh, two weeks after that. So they obviously realised they had a bit of a problem with uh, pollution, and I said... Uh, thanks to lobby groups, it took four years for that to finally uh, mean that they were not burning sort of uh, uh, dangerous fuels and such and looked at cleaner alternatives. Uh, 56 was the year that Corgi Toys was introduced. So, um, yay, um, die-cast toys. So uh, some of their most famous ones were the Batmobile, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and uh, the Aston Martin. Uh, if you got some of those, good luck to you. They're worth several hundred dollars. Uh, it's the first time that the UK had their album charts. So uh, breaking the um, uh, into the lead as being the first number one album uh, listed officially in 1956 was Frank Sinatra's Songs for Swinging Lovers. So uh, hot stuff there, really. Uh, we also saw the uh, the laying of the um, the cable uh, between uh, the UK and. Um, uh, America, so that was uh, uh, something that allowed communications for the first time, and they had, uh, was it uh, 588 calls uh, from London to the US and 119 calls from London, Canada, and that actually meant that they uh, got so overloaded they actually had to sort of upgrade. Uh, and in terms of books, we saw Ag Agatha Christie's Poirot, Dead Man's Folly, Diamonds Are Forever, and 101 Dalmatians, and in the movies, not quite so much. We had X the Unknown, uh, and 1984, and finally what was considered by many critics to be dubbed the worst movie ever made, something called Fire Maidens from Outer Space. So uh, not a good year for uh, UK film. That's it. Very good. Uh, Americans, by the... Uh in contrast to that, we're doing a lot of stuff in 1956 in terms of their films. Forbidden Planet, rated by uh, people who attended Con 9 from Outer Space way back in 2012, is the second best science fiction movie prior, prior to 1965, which was um, uh, obviously classic, and thankfully they have not remade that. Um, one film that did get remade, though, uh, which ended up, ironically, on TV tonight, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the original version of that. And, of course, what made that film extremely popular is the fact that um, because of the whole communist threat going on in America at the time, people looked at the film as saying, oh, the invasion of the body snatchers is communism taking over America. And that's the reason at the end, yeah, the whole goes, look, watch out, protect yourselves. They're here, they're everywhere. So you can actually interpret it in that way uh, if you want to. And I'm sure plenty of audiences did the red threat as it was uh, back in the 50s. Um, and one of the classics from uh, Mr. Harry Housen, Earth versus the Flying Saucers came out where they destroying like the Washington Monument and where the Capitol Hill and various other American um, places. Absolutely fantastic movie with the aliens come down and buy the shit up out of everything. So uh, very, very cool. Going from the skies to underground, you had the mole people before they met Superman, because you had Superman and the Mole Men. This is actually just the Mole People. So uh, there you go. You can interpret that uh, title any way you want. Um, there were a couple of others. There's a long list of these. I'm just going to cut this down very, very short. Uh, it Conquered the World. Now, if you've ever seen the monster from It Conquered the World, 
Um, that was a Lee Clamp Van Cleef film, if I recall. I mean, you see the monster, and it clearly does not look like it's here to be friendly and to make friends. It's just a very aggressive-looking alien. Uh, so uh, clearly it was here to conquer the world and not uh, so like go down to the shops and buy some local fish and chips. Um, the Creature Walks Among Us, which is the third film of uh, The Creature of the Black Lagoon series. So the Creature from the Black Lagoon, Revenge of the Creature, and The Creature Walks Among Us. And I'll tell you what, it is complete tripe. It, uh, if you're ever watching those films, don't even bother with the third one. It was very, very disappointing. So there you go. Um, the Japanese guys uh, in Toho Productions were doing very well this year because Rodan came out, flying around, blowing the shit up out of just about every Japanese city you can think of. But don't worry about it because Godzilla, King of the Monsters, uh, also came out that year as well. So uh, you got dudes stomping around on model buildings. It's what you need to do with your Lego sets. It's definitely the way to go. So, And there was a whole lot of others, but I'm just going to leave it short because I actually want to move on to the next topic. So there you go. How good is that? Anything you two want to add in before we move on? Sounds like your batch is a lot better than mine. Yeah, well, 56. Yeah, MPS, you got to say something. Yeah, I'll jump in with two more movies that came out that year, The King and I uh, and mm. Moby Dick. Uh, in terms of television shows, I have a blank um, page because in terms of America, there was very few that started that we actually know of uh, or mm. have heard about. In Australia, everything in 1956 from September 16 is brand new. So, you know, mm. everything from the news to whatever shows were being shown at the time. Uh, mm. And a very quick list of some of those actors who were born that make pop cultural references. Uh, Mel Gibson, Gina Davis, Mimi Rogers, Nathan Lane, Jimmy Barnes, Tim Russ, Alan Ruck, Tom Hanks, Linda Hamilton, and Carrie Fisher were all born in 1956. Cool. No dramas. Uh, the funny thing about it, it's hard to even begin to imagine what it would be like watching television in the 50s when it was first coming out. And the fact that, like, if you miss the TV show, well, it's just too bad. It ain't going to be rerun. There's no other channels to turn to. There's no streaming services. There's nothing on the internet. And uh, you can just imagine how, like, it, difficult it would have been just to make sure you were there every single time to watch your favorite episode of whatever when it was coming out i mean it's just so hard to fathom uh the technology uh when it was actually occurring you know get to see pictures in your own house how good is that so there you go all right so with that in mind we're going to buzz off we will see you all uh, next week uh make sure you stay self-isolating keep your masks on when you go outside and all the rest of it and in the interim all we can say is <gasps> stay nerdy stay nerdy Eric.